Hey everyone, I have here the latest Lego Marvel Iron Man Armory set for 2022. I bought this for $90 US, that's nine zero, and built the whole thing live over on my Twitch channel. The set includes a total of eight minifigures if you include all of the suits, which don't all have actual heads inside the helmets. The two main builds include a stack of a total of eight of the armor bays and then this suit up and presentation platform. I really quickly want to compare this also to the previous version. I have just the, the simplified stuff here without any of the suits on it. But the new can be connected to the old and there was that also uh, follow on set that worked with the system and used the same visual style. But as you can see, the new one and the old one old ones do not have the same visual style so they don't really go together properly anymore you can connect them but they don't look right together and also this had the the connection to the uh, to the center one of the bays back here whereas the new one is just its own thing i will say the new design looks much better though including the holographic screen which fits in there really really well in between a couple of garage door pieces attached vertically you know so 90 degrees off from their their usual orientation and these do have plenty of room for figures with some accessories in there so not everything needs to be completely stripped down in all cases you can just remove these these stand-ins to put a figure into the spot you know the whole thing is just on its own little assembly those are done with stickers as usual clear backed stickers and then a, a few of these spots are used up by little accessories so just some add-on things and things to be used around the works workspace this can be used as a plinth for the mark 85 backpack i just got a pair of pants down here we'll see the rest of that in a minute each of these has on one side a clip just like before and that's up the upper level and at the lower level i'll explain that further in just a second on the other side you have a bar so again these can all be connected in a line and then up top there's a little bit of railing as well each one of these bays has a large window piece right here, which is facing towards the front. And then there's a fairly large opening on the back and this space just really isn't used. Now you can reorient this to make it like so, which looks great to me, looks really great. You can also bring them in like this, which is also very good and very useful and especially kind of presents well when you bring this platform into the center of it and makes you just want to have more of these and then you can also do this you can separate them top to bottom like so and then just connect these side to side like that these top portions up here can also be removed this is a whole other line and when you remove that then you get the same type of top here so these now become all equal and you can bring these together like so that's very nice that almost brings it in fully to a half of a circle and then you can also do this as well and make it connect around even farther and now if you put this in the center it looks even more complete as a space and interesting as a space for many figures to to walk around and look at the suits if you've got them in place and yeah, it, I, I like this layout i like the options the possibilities here's a real quick look at this just so that you see the details of it, it has one of those radar style pieces down below in the trans light blue color and that's that some of this workshop stuff is pretty darn good i mean the drill press here alone is a it just presents itself very very well you're supposed to put according to the instructions you're supposed to put the handle down lower but this is more accurate and it even has the vice there and everything i mean that's pretty good i would probably put a a single hollow stud right up underneath there just to make it look a little bit more like you have an actual chuck in place this looks pretty good and has some extra details on it there are no additional details inside of this so uh, there are no tools or anything interestingly this did not come with a tool kit you know a traditional tool kit came with one of the more recent accessory uh, sets instead and you also got the the little model right there uh, this is just a, a rolling bench. I've got a head on there right now because they are a helmet on there right now because they suggested that. And then the desk over here, Tony Stark, one of Tony Stark's desks has a couple more stickers used for the heads up display. So you can see a couple things on there. They're actually uh, printed up pretty nicely. The stickers are again, they are stickers, not prints, but the stickers themselves are printed pretty nicely and have nice designs on them. Have a couple of blueprints here as well and then just an additional holder off to the side which interestingly includes a few extra pieces that they put together to make it look like you know the, the parts are not all there and then you've also got a dummy over here who has just a saw blade on and it looks like he's got casters as well 
Looking at included suits, on the left is Mark 25 Striker, in the middle is Mark 3, and on the right is a different version of Mark 85. These all have the brand new helmet design, the latest design, the third generation design of Iron Man helmet, and I didn't put this one down all the way, so I'm just going to use the opportunity to lift that up to show you that these do open up once again. I personally like these designs, I think they look very good, and I think that they're going to be, the, the mold that is, I think that it's going to be very useful for a lot of, uh, a lot more suits in the future. I really like the sculpting around the cheek there. I think that the lines are defined pretty well, and I just generally think it's good. It's just not the same as the ones that we've gotten before, you know, and different is different, especially like the, the setup for Striker over here. It is striking, and the print that's on there, some of the print that's on there, the lighter gray especially, is very matte in its finish, which is just interesting and different. The eyes also have that metallic blue, almost suggestion of glow there. This face looks right for a Mark III to me. The Mark 85, maybe a little bit large in the forehead kind of space, but overall, I think, again, I just think that there's a lot of good possibility, a lot of good opportunity for them to do different things with this style of helmet versus the original style that was very restrictive with the, the smaller faceplate. These are also stronger as well with the much beefier uh, construction and it locks in as well when it's closed. Here's War Machine with the new helmet and a very, a very modest version of a shoulder turret build. You know, a lot of them have been a lot bigger than this. This one obviously does not fire like the stud shooter version. And it, honestly, it's, it's a little bit better scaled, I think. The face that's printed on that war machine is small, but I'm not able to see past the fact that the helmet itself is is rather beefy. You know, I think that this did its best to show better proportions between the shape of, and size of, of the face itself and the body. But I, I personally can still see and focus on, my mind focuses on the size of the head. And it looks like the head, the helmet rather, is, is a little bit too big there. I thought that this was a new version of Tony Stark, but I was corrected on that while I was building it live over on Twitch. And this is an existing, pre-existing version of Pepper Potts as well. Underneath there, you'll see, well, this face again. I've seen that a million times before. The production work on these figures, I think, is very good. And there is a face under here as well. It is as so. I personally will probably never complain about getting another Nick Fury minifigure, if nothing else, for the parts, but the production work here is good, and I think the print work is also very good. And on the right is Whiplash, which looks pretty fantastic. That's a lot of silver, and also silver printing on top of that. Yeah, it looks really good. These chain pieces are done in the trans light blue, and they're the full length, you know, the, the longest version that they make for those. This does use the second generation of helmet, which is obviously still available for them to use to make it look a little bit different and to get a wider print on that and not have the opening face, uh, you know, because I think they just decided that this was more appropriate. And I, I trust that decision in this case. Underneath there, there are two faces. So that's good to see. Also notice a little bit of the, the eye patch strap around the back, although that breaks in the middle for Nick Fury. There's that face printed nice and crisp. And then this face, uh, yeah, there's just a little bit of dust on the top. And for the helmet off look, they also have this. Okay, I, I think that's about the best that they could do. Now, it doesn't quite look like the character. Uh, I think the, the hair, is the hair not too dark? I don't know, it just, he looks, he looks too clean. <laughs> he needs to look more greasy and uh, uh, disturbing. <laughs> to me personally. This of course represents Tony Stark's Audi R8 convertible. Uh, I don't think it makes for a great looking Audi R8 convertible, but it is in a six wide design. And I think that it makes for a great looking sports car. And if, if you know what it is, I think you can make the connection. It's just not entirely realistic, which honestly, it's, it's gonna be very difficult to make a realistic R8 at this scale to Lego standards for something that they can actually put on the market. This is a seven plus set, so they cannot use super advanced and finicky building techniques for this. Overall, I think that's a very good looking car and it's got space for some cargo. I'll, sh I'll show you that uh, momentarily, but yeah, space for cargo just a little bit and also a steering wheel down in there as well as a 
console in front, which is done with a sticker. Here's one other angle as well. And I mean, look at that. It's a, it's a very handsome looking Lego car, especially for its size and the limitations for the, the age range. The cargo is of course the Stark Expo map model that Tony Stark uh, carries in his car in Iron Man 2. Only thing wrong here is that there should be four panels technically, but I'm fine with this because this looks really good, honestly. These are the leftover parts, including some extras from this accessory pack with the silver pieces. And you see a number of interesting colors in here, including the quarter rounds tile and just a regular trans yellow. And this is what the sticker sheet looks like. It's clear backed. So overall, I really like this set and I like its components. I, I even actually like the new design of the, the individual hall bays here, in spite of the fact that I very much dislike its difference and its, its diversion from the original design. You know, anybody who has bought a lot of the original set or the add-on set to create a larger hall of armors is kind of out of luck now. This is not going to be a good parts pack to add on to that. You'll have to just go directly to Bricklink, but this is a superior design. It looks better, work, works better, accommodates more different types of suits. The only thing that I really don't like here is of course, you saw this coming from a billion miles away. The price, $90 US, feels pretty outrageous to me. The original Hall of Armor set from uh, 2019 was $60 US. This is 50% more than that in, in cost. And you don't get 50% more stuff here. You, you just don't. Yeah, the car is here. Cool. I think it's one more figure or something like that cool. It's not worth 50% more. So this one definitely needs to go on sale. Good set, in my opinion, through and through good set. Nothing here is a throwaway piece, it just needs to be reduced in price. So if if the system works, and retailers actually mark this thing down, you know, put it on sale within a reasonable amount of time. I know in many countries that does happen very regularly in the United States. It hasn't really happened much at all in the past three years, at least since the, the thing happened around, around the world, right? And demand shot way up and everything, but starting to see little, little hints of, of sales normalcy coming back. So if that system works and prices get reduced significantly, then good. Again, good set. Just I don't want anybody to pay $90 for this unless you feel really good about that. So those are my thoughts. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you again very soon.